There are in our world right now a very large number of teachers helping people understand techniques and concepts as related to manifestation. But what if the most crucial and beautiful way you could manifest is actually to remember what it was like when you were a child? In this video, I'm going to show you how God answered the prayer of a small child in a unique way and how God wants to do the same thing for you. Greetings everyone, Thomas Shirley here, and I am here to help you build your life better. Recently, one of my stepkids had a birthday. She turned eight years old. Her name is Taylor. Her and her sister McKinley are absolutely adorable, very precious. I love them. Sometimes I want to wring their little necks, but I love them. And if you're a parent of any kind, you know exactly what I mean. But recently, Taylor had her eighth birthday and something was just kind of off with her all day. She was despondent a little bit, kind of disconnected. She wasn't finding any happiness or any joy, even though we were making it all about her. We were we went out to Dunkin' Donuts and got her a coffee and had some fun. We had all kinds of good times planned for the day. It was still early, but she just wasn't feeling it, you know? We tried to talk to her. Well, what, what's going on? Are you struggling with something? Are you upset about something? And her response was no. At a certain point, I just looked at her mom and I said, you know what? Let's stop asking her and let's just provide the best environment that we can so that she can have a really great day. Now, she'd already had a party a week before that. She'd already gotten a ton of presents. She was getting presents. She had just gotten her hamster, which was her big present. She's gotten that a couple days before. Now, here it is her birthday. She's still getting loaded with stuff and she's just not feeling it. So I said, you know what? Let's just back off. Well, we, like I said, we went out to get coffee and run a few errands and take care of some things. And we're coming back to the house. And as we're pulling up to our driveway to pull in, there was a stack of balloons sitting on the lawn. Now, regrettably, my editing software is very crude and minimal right now, so I can't actually put it in this video, but I did take a picture of it and it is in the thumbnail. Now, when we first got home, Taylor saw those balloons and her mom made a statement, wow, Taylor, God gave you balloons for your birthday. Now, you have to understand in our home, there's not a strong religious element or vibe. The concept of God is very different to us than it might be to a lot of other people. And my wife didn't mean anything by way of trying to espouse a certain religious viewpoint to her child. Instead, she just found a little bit of joy and lightness in that and said to her daughter, look, God got you balloons on your birthday. Well, Taylor was excited. And she ran and grabbed the balloons and she was excited about it. And she said two or three times, God got me balloons for my birthday. And I just thought that was as cute as could possibly be. Don't know where the balloons came from. Probably a baby shower or a wedding or something nearby, but clearly had blown in from somewhere else. Four balloons all tied together. Well, my wife and I were sitting outside enjoying the weather and Taylor had gone in and she came back out after a little while and she had the balloons in her hand. She said, you know what? God tried to make me a balloon animal puppy, but he couldn't. And I said, well, why couldn't he? She said, I don't know. Maybe his hands were too big. And I got the absolute biggest kick out of that. She asked permission to go back inside and draw a face on the dog, which you'll see in the thumbnail. So she comes back out several minutes later and she was just gleaming with absolute joy at these balloons that somebody else had lost somewhere, obviously, but had somehow ended up right there in our lawn at our house. To her, all the details didn't matter. Now, her sister McKinley, she's a lot more analytical. and She then like, pulled out a checklist. Well, it's probably this, it's probably that. It's like, Certainly not God, we can just cross that one out, you know? And she went through this whole thing throughout about an hour or so period of time. And, I found so much joy. In fact, Taylor came out when I was outside by myself a little bit later on with the dog. The picture that you see on the thumbnail is actually when she came out. And I'm telling you, I thought her cute little head was just going to crack and fall apart. She was smiling so big. She was so enlightened and enlivened by this one very, very simple thing that took place that obviously has some natural explanations to back it up. But to her, God did something for her and it shifted her entire day. She had such a tremendous, happy, 
free spirit for the rest of the day. Why? Because something happened in her life that nobody could orchestrate for her, but she knew that someone had, and it really changed things for her. Now, you say, Thomas, reality check, my man. I don't need some balloons, right? You say, I want what makes me happy. Now, think about that thought for just a minute. <clears throat> you want to be happy, right? Like that's the primary objective in just about everything we do in life. We choose a career based on the finances we think that we'll make or possibly the environment we think that it will make us happy. We choose relationships in the same way. We choose where we're going to live based on this. We choose any number of issues in our life based on the end result of those things making us happy. Now, Taylor didn't really need like an expensive gift. She didn't want anything big necessarily. She'd already gotten everything she'd asked for. But what she did want is she wanted someone to surprise her with something special that was just for her that she knew that she was loved in a unique way. God wants to show you a unique, special type of a love. Why? Because he wants you to be happy. God's primary objective in our lives is to get us to that place of resting in Him so that we can have joy and gratitude and live the life that He intends for us to live, which is only good continually. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God wants us to have good things in our lives so that we can be happy. Now, what we tend to do is we tend to get very focused on the details right? Like my bank account is too low. I need more money. My car is falling apart. I need a better vehicle. My spouse, well, I don't want to talk about that. You know, I need a new spouse. Uh, my kids are driving me nuts. I need new kids as laws against that kind of thing. But you get what I'm saying. We have things in our lives that we don't like. We want other things that will be better than those things because we think these things will make us happy. But if you look back over your life, you realize there have been all kinds of times and you thought this move or that action was going to bring you happiness. And maybe it did for a brief moment, but then it petered out and you realized, oh crap, it's still the same mess that it always was before. I want to encourage you today to learn how to manifest from a place of gratitude and expectancy of happiness, as opposed to trying to get details in your life to line up with your image of what you think your life should be. Have you ever noticed how easy it is for most children to manifest? They say they're thirsty. Somebody gets them something to drink. They say they're hungry. Somebody gets them some food. They say they're sleepy. Somebody helps them take a nap. They're dirty. Somebody helps them get clean. Everything in their lives is pretty much handed to them. Now, I realize there are some bad situations. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids grow up in all over this planet. And I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is you right here, right now. Because we can't do anything about people that aren't watching the video, right? We can't do anything about people that are stuck in those situations from right here, right now. But what we can do is we can allow our hearts and our minds to be restored to the original intent, the original expectation of who and of what we are at conception when we behold the fullness of the kingdom and all that there is in infinite intelligence. And from that place, we recognize what we are. We know what we are, complete and total peace in that. And we're showing our lives as a tale that is told. It's laid out before us. And then we're born into this world and largely we forget. Now I'm going to put a link in the video at the end about that original expectation, that original, your actual self, who you truly are, that unique signature expression. But suffice it to say for right now, you and I have lived our lives in contrast, deciding what we do like and what we don't like. And that's the nature of the program, right? Like that's pretty much from the moment we're born. I mean, you look at a baby when it's born, most of them start crying. Why? Because holy crap, it was nice and warm and moist and everything was good and kosher just a minute ago. And now I'm exposed to the elements. and I've got people poking me and rubbing me and talking to me and there's lights and there's noise and everything's different. So from the very moment that we enter into this physical experience outside of our mother's womb and even in the womb, in extreme situations. But the moment we enter into this world, we are immediately presented with contrast. And that contrast leads us to draw conclusions on what we find to be pleasing and what we do not find to be pleasing. And so we begin to build our lives in the categories of what makes us happy and what makes us unhappy and different nuances that are attached to those vantage points. But what if where you are now in your life, you can remember who you are and what you are. 
And from that place, you can recognize that the life that you're living really isn't so much about the details of what happens and what you experience, as it is about living from that place of being that divine supernatural creator that has the power to speak to every situation and bring positive lasting change. Our manifestation journey is not about accumulating things. You've ever heard the old adage, you never see a U-Haul following the hearse to the cemetery. Why? Because you can't take it with you, right? You can't bring these things with you, but you can have these things to live a truly blessed and happy life. That being said, there's all kinds of people throughout history and on this planet right now that don't have the newest iPhone, that don't have like the Samsung Galaxy Ultra S27++ plus 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 thing. Now, you don't need those things. I, I remember as a kid, like the TV, it was the, the you know, TV was this big, but the actual monitor would be like this big, you know? And then like suddenly you could upgrade, you get those big console TVs they used to have. And then the flat screen TVs came, came along and, and those things were huge and they are about 400 pounds a piece and the technology is advanced. And every time a new TV came out, it's like, oh, I have one of those right there. That's a nice TV. I need one of those in the house. And you get that one. And the next thing you know, you need the next one and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one. Listen to me. Your life is not about the next one. Your life is about now because it is who and what you are now that you are here to experience. And in that experience, your life is divine. Why? Because it's all yours. It's all yours. He that offered up his own son, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things, the scriptures declare. Now, Taylor unwittingly manifested something in her life that she did not even know that she needed. We asked her, like, what do you need to make today special for you? She didn't know what's bothering you. She didn't know. But there was something in the vibration of that small child where she knew she just needed like that little extra blessing, like that little cherry on top of the sundae, if you will, the sprinkles on top of the gingerbread cookies, for instance, that we made yesterday. She knew she needed something, but she didn't even know how to be aware of that. But she created an experience for herself where infinite intelligence was able to funnel into her circumstance of just the silliest, most absurd little thing in the world. And it was this balloon animal that God's great big hands couldn't, you know, it couldn't get the details right. Now, why aren't we manifesting like that? The small child that gets every need met, that gets everything taken care of. Of course, someone's going to say, well, of course they have everything taken care of for them. Someone's there making sure that the bills are paid so they can have food and electricity and running water and a place to sleep and clothes to wear and transportation and all the other many things that accompany life on this planet. But the truth of the matter is that relationship that you have with your child or that a parent has with the child where they care for the needs of that child in part is designed by God to remind you that that's how it is as he being your father wants to bless you in your life. We need to be a people that gets back to that original expectation and manifests like children. Jesus said, except you be converted and become as little children, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. What kind of life are we wanting to live? Is it simply a shallow, hollow life where finances and good times and parties are there? You say, hell yeah, it sounds good to me. And I can't say that I disagree with you. But there is a much richer depth of joy, happiness, contentment, and gratitude that comes from that place of saying, you know what? All the stuff that I want for my birthday, it's here, but it's still not working. And I don't really know what I need, so I'm just going to go with the flow. When you get into the place where you can go with the flow and allow your actual self to just gently flow to the top, you will find yourself manifesting the most peculiar and unusual opportunities and surprises that life could possibly afford for you. I remember many, many years ago when I was in Bible college, uh, sitting in the cafeteria area where they had a little store, a little shop, you could get snacks and drinks and things like that. And I remember sitting there, I was very poor at the time, kids in school, ministry and everything, very, uh, very depleted financially at the time. And I remember sitting there and all my buddies were drinking coffees and sodas or whatever that they were drinking. And 
I wasn't really interested in a drink. I, I was just kind of struggling. I was down. I wasn't really sure what was going on. It was just one of those things that just had to kind of write it out. And a buddy of mine named Mike came up to me. I didn't even see him walk in. He came up to me at a certain point and he put a cup of coffee down in front of me. And Mike and I had been hanging out a lot. And we actually were doing some ministry work together. So he knew how I liked my coffee, strong and black. And uh, he set that thing down in front of me and he said, Tom, I just wanted to say, I, I used to go by Tom, it's Thomas now. And he just put it down. He said, Thomas, I just thought you could use a coffee. I thought maybe God wanted to give you a kiss. So here you go. When you get into a place of manifesting, not based on the things that you think will make you happy or complete, but instead coming into that expectancy of a small child and saying, you know what, I don't even really necessarily know the details and the things that will make me happy, but I know that my father, I know that the universe is fully moving into my life to show me everything that will provide me with genuine, lasting happiness. Man, I want to be like Taylor. Taylor, you're my hero, kiddo. I love the way that you have such a carefree spirit, and I love the way that you manifested your little balloon doggy from God. I hope that you'll check out the video links here at the end. Also, if you would like a personal recorded prophetic word that is prayerfully sought out for you, there's a description in the link below. You can click on that, fill out a quick form, and within a few days I will get a recording to you of something that God has put into my heart for you and your circumstance and situation that will be a blessing to you. So I hope that you'll take the time to do that. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, my friends, be blessed.